Hey everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. I'm super excited today. I have one of my dream guitars sitting in my lap right now. I waited a lifetime to finally get one. And uh, this isn't gonna be a review of the guitar. I really wanna play it for a lot longer before I actually do one of those videos. Today's gonna be more of a, uh, you know, 10 things that I realized when I finally was able to play this guitar that I never really expected. It's one of those things where sometimes you imagine playing a guitar and what it's gonna be like, but then when you actually get it, you're surprised by a couple things. So I came up with 10 things that kind of did that to me. So as soon as the guitar arrived, I pulled it out of the case. I felt like a little kid during Christmas. I know that's a cliche, but it was true. And I started to play around with it a little bit, but it was out of tune. So I'm just tuning like normal, you know, like staring at the tuner, and all of a sudden I got to the other side of the 12 string headstock, and I suddenly hit the tuning pegs of the six string guitar. And I realized that there's sort of a little trap right here. It's almost like teeth coming in from both sides. And all of a sudden my fingers got stuck between the two headstocks. I thought, okay, I'm gonna have to get used to that. So as soon as they get to this middle area, I have to change my technique of turning the tuning pegs, which is just a little something to get used to, but I was not expecting that. And so I was in tune, I started to play around on the six string guitar, and I realized that there were only 20 frets on that, on both guitars actually. So that was kind of a surprise. You think I would have seen that when I looked at the picture when I went to buy it online, but I really didn't focus on that. It's really weird. I was just so excited about getting the guitar itself that I didn't really notice that detail. So only 20 frets on both fretboards. And then here's the weird part. Usually on an SG, it's really easy to access the uh, higher frets. You know, usually there's 22 frets. But on this one, it's kind of hard to reach all the way to the 20th fret even. So the 18th fret is the most comfortable one to reach to. So that's very different than my other SGs. So if you take a look at the standard SG, it's like a little tiny version of the double neck, um, there's 22 frets and it's really easy to hit that fret because that's just the way SGs are built. They're known for that. So it's gonna take a little while to get used to having 20 frets and having them hard to reach. Now I never knew this about double neck guitars. This toggle switch right here will switch between the six string guitar and the 12 string guitar, that I knew about. But I didn't realize that there's actually a middle position that will allow both of the guitars to work at the same time. Now that can open up a lot of cool creative avenues and I'm excited to explore that in the future. So I thought that's really cool that I could play something on the six string. Go right to the 12 string and just go ahead and start playing without having to do any switching. So that's gonna be really exciting to play around with. Another thing that I didn't notice when I was looking at the pictures online was that the bridges are different than what I'm used to on SG guitars or any Gibson. So let's take a look at the standard SG again. You probably recognize the standard stop tail. This one's pretty cool, it's gold, I love it. But if you look at the double neck, so they lay really flat, they just screw right into the body, and I'm not gonna complain for a couple reasons. First of all, they do the job. You know, they don't look as cool as the traditional stop tails in my opinion, but the other good thing is that they don't add any more weight to the guitar. This guitar was actually a demo model at the Gibson factory, and so there's a little demo stamped on, stamped on the back of one of the headstocks. And so after I played it for a while, I started to think, okay, a lot of people probably played this guitar. I'm not sure if they cleaned it before they sent it to me, but I realized I'm going to have to change the strings as soon as possible. As soon as I started to do that, I realized how big of a chore that's going to be now. I'm used to just changing six strings typically. I have changed my 12 string acoustic one time, and that takes a while. But now I have to worry about 18 strings. So from now on, changing strings on this thing is going to be sort of a full all afternoon type of an event. The first time I stood up with this guitar with a strap, I realized two things. First of all, if either of these guitars is at the perfect height of what I'm used to, there's a problem. Okay, so let's say I wanted to make the 12 string sit right where I'm used to when I stand up. So it's usually like right here. Well, now the six string is so low, it's gonna be like James Hetfield or something. And if I do the opposite, the opposite problem will happen. If I have the six string where I want it, the 12 string is gonna be way up in my armpits. So I realized that this guitar is always gonna be too high and too low at the same time. I just have to get used to that. The other thing I realized is that this thing is not as heavy as I expected it to be. A lot of people were like, that thing is a tank, man. But I weighed it. I used my good old fish scale that I bought, very Minnesotan of me. And this guitar came in at a little over 12 pounds. Now my Les Paul is actually 10 pounds. So to have this double guitar be only a couple pounds heavier than my Les Paul is completely acceptable in my opinion. 
Now this took me completely by surprise. I was playing around with that three-way toggle switch and I accidentally shut off one of the guitars. So I only had it in the 12 string mode and I started to play the six string on accident. So I started to strum and this happened. I realized that what was happening was as I was playing the six string side of this guitar, which is shut off right now, the strings on the 12 string are vibrating. Sympathetic resonance, it's called. So it's like if you walk into a room full of guitars and you play an A tone, all the A strings of the guitars will vibrate. It's kind of a cool thing. So that happens on this double neck pretty easily. And really it's cool because it adds this sort of reverb effect. So if I put both guitars on and I do what I just did. See how it has a little bit of a tail? And I could stop it by doing that. I like the first effect where I shut one off completely and then I just play the other guitar. It's a real ethereal sound, kind of Led Zeppelin-y, I love that. You could do it the opposite way too. You could turn on the six string guitar and just play the 12 string. Same type of thing happens. Sounds really cool with distortion in my opinion. So I'm gonna have a lot of fun being creative with that concept. Now this is something that seems kind of stupid, but it's helpful. I figured this out today actually. I put the snark on the 12 string side of things and I thought, okay, I'll tune it. And then when I go to the six string side of the guitar, I'll just have to switch it like that. No big deal. But I got a little bit lazy and I tried leaving the snark on the 12 string headstock and it worked for the six string as well. So there are a couple of issues because of that resonance happening. There are a lot of frequencies bouncing around, but I was able to tune it pretty well by leaving the snark tuner just on one headstock. So that might save you a little bit of uh, having to do that if you're on stage. I plan on using this at my next concert, which is actually this weekend, and I've never played a double neck on stage, so I'm very excited about it, but I'm also worried about a couple things. I was laying in bed the other night and it hit me that none of my guitar stands that I have will actually work for this thing. If you think about it, the standard guitar stand has the bass, it has the neck and then the head that holds the, uh, the neck part of the guitar. Well, I don't have any that'll work for a double neck guitar, so I was gonna look up on Amazon double neck guitar stand. But then it hit me that all I need are one of these, uh, just the bass portion stands. So I found one in my closet, actually. It's this kind right here. So for this particular guitar, I have to remember that I have to bring a special stand for it. It's not the biggest deal in the world if I showed up to a gig without the right stand for this thing. I could just leave this in its case and pull it out when I need it, but it's really nice to have a guitar ready and on a stand when you're on stage. So what I'm most nervous about for my show coming up is the fact that a few of the songs I have to switch between the two guitars pretty quickly. So it's a heart tribute band, we play the song Love Alive. So there's a section where I have to play this part. And I have to switch to the other guitar really fast and at the same time switch to distortion. So this week should be very interesting. I have to practice a lot of songs and I have to practice utilizing a type of guitar I've never used on stage before. So leave me a comment and let me know if you ever played a double neck guitar and what you thought about it and if I should be expecting anything. Maybe I forgot some things. I haven't played it long enough to really learn everything about the nuances about playing one of these things. But if you have any warnings for me or any questions about this guitar, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to answer them. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching this video. Like I said, I'll be doing a review of this in a few weeks after I play this for a while. And I'll have a lot more so uh, sound examples. I'll be playing it quite a bit. And I'll talk more in depth about the features uh, and what's included in this guitar. So that should be fun. Okay, everyone, we'll see you at the next live stream or video. And uh, take care. Bye-bye.